drive in there where I run in Sunday before going to, to see my mom and I pick up some flowers. Okay, nothing wrong with that. But why don't you pick up something that's going to last? Okay, so here's some tips. Right now, you're going to find tulips. You're going to find a lot of li lilies from Easter and some other Asiatic lilies. The first thing you want to look at, they're so beautiful, right, with their trumpet shape. But if you notice that the pollen in the anthers, which are those two little, you know, the, the little sticks that stick up from the middle, if you see that they're starting to shed pollen, say no. The same thing with tulips. I saw beautiful tulips, $4. I mean, that's nice. But be aware that those plants that are already uh, open, the cut flowers that are open, and the pollen, to start to shed, that flower is going to start to come apart within a few days. So FYI, if you didn't know that. Now, something else that I wanted to uh, give you a tip on, orchids. Mom, can we see this orchid here? Do you guys see this, friends? Okay, the orchids are beautiful. Actually, I'm gonna move it over here. Now, what's really important when you're selecting an orchid for mom, is the overall health of it. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing if you give mom an orchid and then all of the flowers start to fall off, you know, the first week. So here's a telltale sign. Here's the stem. I want you to understand how flowers are formed on an orchid. This is the moss orchid or the phalaenopsis. They start to flower from the bottom first. So this is the oldest orchid flower on this stem. Then this one came, then this one, then this one, then this one. Okay, but look at this. This one's open. That's beautiful. I only have one little bud. <laughs> so you can imagine if I just received this on Sunday, there's not much time to enjoy this. Let's look at this side. Well, it's got a couple of buds. So the point is when you're selecting these amazing orchids, you're gonna find them all totally open. You know, uh, three or four stems that are gorgeous. Uh, just make sure that there are some buds for mom to enjoy, okay? And then the other thing you're gonna look at is you're gonna take a look at the roots to make sure that they look healthy. You know, sometimes if you have an orchid that is full of roots that look like this with the little wire hanging out that's not a root that's not an orchid that has been well cared for let's turn this around actually this one doesn't look too bad except for look at this leaf yeah try to skip the ones that have broken leaves but i want to give you some fascinating information uh mom maybe you can back up just a little bit now, for those of you who love orchids, you want to put your elbows on here? I'm trying to make my mom comfortable. <laughs> I, I spoil my mom. That's not going to work. I spoil my mommy. It's okay. Okay, mommy, you okay? Yeah. All right, mom. I just want you comfy. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so take a look at these roots. Something fascinating about the orchid plant is that what you're looking at right here, this, this is actually the root. This spongy green, waxy, vellum, ve ven oh, I can't even say the word, uh, vellum, this is the cover. It's like a cable. You know how a cable cord has the covering and then inside are the wires? That's the same thing with the orchid. So sometimes when you look at an orchid and you see this and it looks like it's green inside, that means that it doesn't need to be watered. That means that it's well hydrated, you see? And sometimes you'll look at, and you'll look through this because it's translucent, and it looks gray, or it looks parched. It is, it needs water. So it's really interesting when you really start to appreciate orchids and take good close looks at them, how much you can, how much it will tell you what it needs. So again, always look at your roots and make sure that she's got nice healthy roots so that you can give mom a nice gift, okay? And this one, even though it doesn't have a lot of buds left, it is nice. 
Now, I do want to look at some of your uh, questions. So if you will give me a second, I am going to call up my page so that I can read some of the um, questions that you have for me. So I am going to do that now. And this is a good time not to leave, but maybe go grab a cup of tea, some coffee, some wine, I don't know, whatever you like. Go get it, because we're going to have a good time together. We have about 20 minutes uh, left, but I am going to devote myself to you. Ooh, it looks like it's coming out, guys. <gasps> oh, I'm watching myself. Why is that like that? <laughs> well, there I am. <laughs> it's delayed. That's so funny. Okay, so let me take a look at here. Lindsay, my daughter, thank you for manning the booth. I see that you are replying to people. Oh, and Zazie, thank you. You said that you like my glasses. I need my glasses. I need them, or else we won't be talking. I have Jax Tran. Hi. You said that you have one, uh, but your azalea plant is turning brown and all the flowers are dying. Can I revive it or not? Okay, so Jax, good question. Right now is azalea season. I don't know if your plant is indoors or outdoors, but if it is, either way, I want you to understand something. The flowers are not gonna last that long. Sometimes they last very short, maybe a few days, and then they're gone. And then more come. So what you need to do is look at your plant. Are there any buds? If there's buds, there's hope. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, but you said, that, I think you said here that your plant is turning brown. Okay. Friends, a sign of overwatering and not enough air circulation and not enough of uh, uh, sunlight is that the leaves will start to brown and wilt. Now, Jax, I don't know how often you water your plant and I don't know if you have it indoors or outdoors and if it's outdoors, it should be in the shade garden. But if the leaves are turning brown, I would venture to say, and the flowers are falling, that you may be overwatering. Make sure that your potting soil has good drainage and that it is also an acidic blend of soil because the pH of, of uh, the soil for your azalea should be on the, pea, on the uh, acidic side. I hope that that helps you. Okay, let's see what else we have. Oh, you guys are the sweetest. Okay, I'm gonna say hi to some of you first, whoever I can see here, Maxim. Hi, Cindy, I appreciate you coming. Lynn, Zazy, thank you so much. Miss Kathy Dawn, botanical interest, yay. By the way, friends, botanical interest is one of the seed companies that I really like. They have a great germination rates. It's a good quality product. So some of you who are gardening right now and starting gardens, uh, veggie gardens, herb gardens, even flower gardens, Botanical interests, good people. Okay, I'm gonna give more highs, but let me answer some more questions. Mm, Cindy, thank you for thinking I look beautiful. <laughs> I don't feel beautiful right now, <laughs> but I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Cindy, don't be embarrassed. Okay, I'm not embarrassed, I'm with friends. And somebody's here from Instagram, Paul. Hi, Paul, thank you for coming. Miss Kathy is from Facebook. Okay, I'm looking for questions. Uh, Cindy loves orchids. Oh, Jax, you didn't realize that I was answering your question. I can tell by how you responded. Let's see. Oh, Jax said that he made a tulip hydrosol uh, and it didn't matter. I guess he was talking about his tulips. That's great. Do any of you guys make hydrosols? That's something that I'd like to know. Please, in the chat, I'm not just, don't just ask me questions. Tell me the things you want me to talk about. What do you want me to teach you? Now, Jax mentioned hydrosol. The reason why that resonated with me is because I think that when we grow plants, when we grow herbs or flowers, and there's a benefit that we can reap from it other than just, 
you know, just enjoying the beauty of it in the yard or, you know, enjoying it in our house as a cut flower. Many things can be used and made into beautiful things. For instance, last year I made, with lilacs, I made perfume and florage. But it was a very uh, basic uh, old technique for making perfume by infusing the lilac leaves in fat, render it. Uh, even some people use coconut oil these days, but that's something great. If you're growing echinacea, learn how to make a tincture. I can teach you how. Uh, all of these things are really amazing. And I'm happy to hear, Jax, that, that you made a hydrosol. I think that's amazing. Um, Lynn, you're asking, so it's normal for orchids to have exposed roots? Great question. Oh, can you tell I like to teach? Okay, where's my plant? Where's the one with the exposed roots? Here we go. Yes, this is okay. We're going back to orchids. And, and by the way, friends, I do have an orchid care playlist that I want you to look at before you leave if you're interested in orchids. And um, this is one of the things that I cover. Okay, so this is a typical orchid. You can see that it's got roots sticking out, which they call aerial roots. This is normal. And then you have some roots that are inside. Okay, so why is this okay? Why is this something you don't necessarily have to cut off? Okay, in nature, now mom, look at me, because I'm getting excited. Okay, in nature, what happens is these plants are not in containers. They grow on tree limbs. So you see a tree growing right there, just like that. And a lot of the times, because it's not planted, see my hand is a tree, because it's not planted in soil and it's not able to draw water from the soil and nutrients, these aerial roots grow like an octopus. They just are out there seeking water, seeking nutrients. It's an incredible uh, uh, act and it's a great adaptation for survival. So when you see, and I took this out of the pot, when you see the aerial roots out, that is just a normal feature. These are the ones that, hey, they're like, you pop, you pop me in here. They're saying, hey, wait a minute, we're still orchids. We're epiphytes. And they're still reaching out as they would in nature for their um, nutrients and for their humidity. Now, here's something to keep in mind. When you repot this, when this starts to outgrow its place, always, if you're gonna keep those aerial roots and you're not cutting them, do not put them in the new pot. Put them just as they are in the large pot. They still should be sticking out, okay? So that is the long answer to a very short little question, but you know what? I think it's important for us to understand why. I know I was annoying. Mom, was I annoying when I was little? I'm, why? <laughs> okay. But why? Yeah. Was I, you're saying I'm annoying? No, uh -huh. no, you say that you are, I say that you asked the question. Okay, I did. Mm -hmm. You see, I could be a little annoying, but now it's good because I teach. Oh, I needed that. More questions. Ooh, Miss Kathy Dawn, you say that you have a steep slope and you need a ground cover. Okay, well, here's the thing. I don't know exactly what um, this garden zone you're in. I don't know what your weather is like, but let me give you some very important guidelines. And for some of you too, you may have a, a downhill slope. Now, something that's important about selecting plants for downhill is that the plant should be something that does not need to be maintained. Okay, so a hybrid tea rose, a beautiful long stem rose, you'd have to go out there and cut it after, you know, the flower fades and keep it looking beautiful and you have to, um, you know, fertilize it. Not, no, you're not gonna do that on a hill, right? So what you select, number one, is low maintenance plants that are well adapted to your area. Plants that don't need a lot of water. Now, if you live in an area that doesn't have a drought problem, fantastic. It still holds true because plants that are acclimated to your native area, they're the ones that don't bug so much. They're not asking for stuff from you, right? 
And don't we want to enjoy our plants or do we want to go out there and just chore and chore and chore? I mean, yes, that's fun. But a hillside, you could create a beautiful tapestry of low growing plants. And now ground covers don't only encompass plants like, you know, you think of a ground cover like grass, grass, you know, a few inches tall. We're going to cover the hillside with, you know, something a few inches tall. No, it could be different heights. You could do a juniper that is kind of a cascading juniper. Uh, you can do something like, you know, uh, 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 ornamental grasses that are short and that have different colors of plumes and the foliage changes throughout the year. That's kind of fun to do too. So when you think of ground cover, think outside of the box. Don't just think of like wall to wall carpet. Think of things with texture and with height that are low maintenance. One of the ground covers that I like in my LA garden, for a hillside specifically, are lantanas. Are you guys familiar with lantana? Okay, lantana, you guys are gonna check this up, uh, uh, check this out after we're done, is a great ground cover. There are some lantana plants that grow to be six feet tall. That's not the one that I necessarily want on my ground. On my. There are some that cascade and they grow maybe two feet hummingbirds and they attract butterflies. I mean, that's the good kind of stuff, right? And what I love is that, again, I don't have to go, uh, I don't have to do anything with fertilizing it. I don't have to give it extra water. It always looks good. And you know what, friends? No matter where you live, I can guarantee you that there is a plant that thrives in that area that meets that uh, specific bill. And so that is what you should be looking for. And again, don't be afraid to mix it up. It doesn't have to be all ivy. Remember when ivy was popular? I think, I don't know. I, I, I redid, as a landscape designer, I redid so many homes that were landscaped in the 1970s. And they all had ivy. Ivy everywhere. I'm like, come on. We can be inspired. There's millions of plants. And so I want to encourage you, uh, friends, to look for something well adapted that will fit that bill. I'm going to go on to the next question. Let's see. Wow, you guys are really writing in here. Uh, let's see. Cindy Hewitt, you just said that you, it's good to know about botanical interests and you're going to visit their site. That's good. I think you're going to find things that you like there. Elizabeth, thank you. You found me. Are you still there? Don't leave me. Okay, let's see. Garden, oh, garden love, you're so sweet. How are you doing? I know that you're in LA, right? I like your videos. Okay, uh, there, oh, more questions. Jerry Bonares, how to take care of hydrangeas? I'm in a tropical country. I find it difficult to grow them. Are you kidding me? A trop, you know what? I would die to have tropical type weather for my hydrangeas. Now, a little too much humidity can be a problem especially with fungus and things like that and rot. But I would have to say that if you are in, I don't know what kind of a problem you're having with your hydrangeas, but hydrangeas need so much water. These are plants that you don't allow them to dry out. These are not the plants that we talked about a minute ago when I said, find yourself a well-behaved ground cover. Hydrangeas, they're like, they want water constantly. Now it's true that if the air is, you know, very, very humid and it's unrelenting, and if your hydrangeas are growing really close to each other, you can have a problem. Uh, you can get some kind of rot, but if that's not the issue, I would ask you, what kind of soil do you have? Do you have acidic soil? Now, I know that we read articles and, you know, this has to have a pH between six and seven. It's gotta be acidic soil. It's like, but well, why? Let me tell you why. Plants have a specific need for their soil requirements. The reason is the soil is their gut. It not only anchors for them, you know, is an anchor for them to stand and hold them upright, the soil 
is where they derive all of the nutrients that they're going to be able to take up is in the soil. And pH affects, the pH level will affect the, the ability, okay, of, of the plant to take up certain of the nutrients. And so if you don't have the right pH and your plant, like a hydrangea, requires an acidic pH, then it will become a malnourished plant. What happens to malnourished plants? Oh, well, they get sick, just like humans. You know, if I don't take good care of myself and I don't eat right, then I become weak and I become susceptible to illness. Same thing with plants. What else can happen? Well, pests can, you know, they can, they can spot a weak plant a mile away and we get infestations. So it's incredibly important to check your soil. If you do not have um, a university extension program near you, I think you said you're in a different country, then I do believe that there are available online or maybe in your garden center, small little tests, little kits, where you take a little sample of your soil and you mix it with some water and then shake, 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 and then it tells you, ooh, you have acidic soil or alkaline soil or you're, you have neutral soil. Really important. So just as a general rule, if you're having trouble with a plant, always first ask yourself, does this plant receive what it needs? Is it in the right sun exposure? Does it have the right pH soil? Is it being fertilized? Does it get water? Is it too much water? These are the things that I can give to you so that you can go back and check out the problem and check off any of these things because a lot of the times it's how we care for it or where we've placed it in our garden that has created a problem. But don't feel bad, I'm not, I'm not knocking you. You should see all the plants I kill. Okay, let's continue. Elizabeth Bonet, what a pretty name, hi. Jaretta Thousand, how do you plant lemon verbena? You plant it a lot. I love lemon verbena. It is one of my favorite herbs. And you can plant it from seed, but I believe that you can find them also at your garden center. You can take cuttings if you already have one. And, you know, I wish I had one here to show you how to, to take a cutting from it. But I'm going to show you guys how to take cuttings from geraniums because it's just such a popular plant that people want to know. So I'm, I apologize that I can't give you a step out and I don't have the seeds to show you, but that is something that I can follow up. And please, if you want specific information about growing it, like for instance, it needs full sun, yes, because this is a plant that's green and leafy, it's an herb. It needs the, you know, to photosynthesize. That's how it gets its energy and it grows and grows. So full sun, it needs a neutral soil, nothing acidic, nothing alkaline. And it's a plant that can dry a little bit in between waterings. We're not talking you're gonna go and it looks parched and caked, you know, oh, I better, I better water my plant. No, don't let it go that far. But do allow it to dry a little bit in between. And you will get tremendous growth in a month or two, especially right now that we're going into the warmer season. So I hope that that helps you a little bit. Mom, how do you feel? Mom, do you need water? Oh, no, thanks. Are you sure? Mom, how do I look? Beautiful. You'll tell me the truth. Beautiful. Do I look parched, guys? Are my lips all... You look beautiful. I love you, Mommy. Okay. Um, Elizabeth. Oh, I can come to you. I'll take it to you. Hydrangeas. Ah. So, Elizabeth, you're asking me how you can probably propagate lilacs. So you want to multiply it. You want to take a cutting and you also want to take a cutting um, of hydrangea. Is that correct? You want to learn from your grandmother's house. When should I do both of these? Okay, so let me just give you some general guidelines. When you take cuttings from plants, it's best to do it in early spring, in the springtime, so you have some time for those cuttings to become established. 
uh, before you set them out in larger pots or into your garden. Now, the other thing is if you're in a mild climate like I am, we basically can take cuttings anytime. I don't know where you live, but it is something that is very simple. You know what, with that question, let me show you guys how simple it is to multiply a geranium plant and the principles that I am going to cover in geranium propagation is practically the same for some of these other plants that we're discussing. The only thing is where you cut on the plant. Some plants need you to cut from an old stem, some from the new tips, and that's very specific. So if you guys want a video on, say, lilac propagation, how to multiply a hydrangea, can you guys put it on the chat there? And my daughter, Lindsay, will answer. God, I have a good family. My mom and my daughter. Can you guys give them a shout out? My mom's name is Shirley and my daughter is Lindsay. Okay, so let me show you with that how I'm gonna multiply. And mom, you can just keep the camera right here. I'm gonna move this on over. I'm gonna show you how to multiply a geranium. Simple. By the way, everybody should have a Lazy Susan. These are the best for any type of gardening or crafting. <coughs> okay, uh-oh, I need water. I may have to call in my husband because <clears throat> my mom's holding the camera if I start to choke. <laughs> but you know what? He'll never get on camera. He is not the kind of person who wants to do that. So he's gonna be like, you know, in Charlie Brown where you hear wah, 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 wah in the background and it's all the adults and the teachers. Well, I'm Shirley Brown and my husband is like Charlie Brown. He won't get on camera, but you'll probably hear him talking. Okay, so here we go. If you want to take a plant, for instance, like this um, geranium, this is a zonal geranium. What you do is, you know, you actually want to find a plant that's maybe a little more established, but this is the one I have, so I'm going to show you how to do it. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's in good shape. So make sure that the plant you're taking a cutting from is in good health. You don't want it something that's struggling, that's, you know, with yellow leaves or, or with pests. That doesn't work. Okay, so for this, I am going to look for a stem that's at least a few inches tall. Typically, I would say take a, a six inch stem. But we don't have any here, do we, Mom? Do you see anything? No, I don't. You don't? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I'm so bad. Okay. Well, that has one. Okay, listen. You actually can just take a cutting from one of these leaves. Now, I usually don't do that, but I'm going to show you how easy it is. I'm going to cut this, but I'm not going to show you yet. Hold on. Hold on, folks. I want to find... Okay, let me... Oh, no, Mom. Am I going to cut this? Can you see oh, this? Oh, no. Oh, Mom. But Don't my friends it. want to learn. You guys want to learn? Yeah? Okay. Hold on, guys. My mom has been taking care of these. Mom, can you go back a little bit? That's too close. That's for 20-year-olds. You don't go that high. Can you see my face? Hi again. <laughs> I'm going to teach my mom. When my computer uh, webcam doesn't work and she's got to hold the camera, like... Don't get too close, Mom. Um, listen, my mom brought these back to life because I was too busy, and my mom's staying with me, and she's the best. And so she uh, brought these back to life. And, Mom, I'm going to cut a stem. Okay? I'm so sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to find... Let me see. I'm going to find where a leaf emerges, okay? And I'm going to cut right underneath it at an angle. Can you guys see that? Mom, can you see that? Yes. So I'm not cutting above, I'm cutting below. Right there. Okay. So look at how this looks right now. So why did I cut it there? Well, because this is going to end up going into a new container to try to form new roots. What's happening is wherever there is a node, that's a growth point, and wherever your node is, a leaf emerges, but I don't want this leaf to be here. What I want is I want new roots. So since this is a growth point and it's active, 
I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. And now what's going to happen is, when I'm, I'm going to do the next steps, but when this goes into the soil, the area that I just cut the leaf from, that is where, one of the points where the roots will start to emerge from. So you work with the physiology of your plant. Okay, now, Mom, go back a little bit. Thank you, Mom. Okay, now, this looks so cute, right? But unfortunately, when you're propagating a plant or multiplying it, you don't need the flower. So, but don't cry, because I'm going to put this to use. Hold on. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Oh, thank you. Okay, the better one. <laughs> I don't throw away anything. Okay, so get rid of the flowers. And it's okay to select a stem that has had a flower recently. That's a very vigorous and active stem. And that's a good thing. We want that. So, okay, so you saw I removed uh, one of the leaves here. I'm actually going to remove this one too. Now, you can take it off with your hands very carefully. Well, maybe I won't though. I'm going to use my clippers. Okay, so now we have two growth points, two nodes. Eh, I'm going to take this one off. Too. Okay, did that with my hand. And then, oh no, mom, look. Oh, yeah. But my friends, mom, my friends. Oh, is no. it okay? Do I no, yes, it? yes for them. See how good my mom is? I love my mom. Okay, so I'm going to pinch this off. We don't want buds on our uh. I know. Okay, so we're doing this for the friends. Okay, so now what I'm going to use is a little rooting hormone. And all that is, they're hormones, actual hormones, that they, um, they influence the rooting action uh, of, your, of your stem. So the way you use it, and this is used in a lot of places, and some people like to use natural things like cinnamon. You can use cinnamon um, as a rooting hormone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip the tip, just like that, okay? And I don't want too much of it. Tap, 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 just get the excess. Now, the next thing is, I'm gonna put this in to the potting soil, but I'm not gonna put it in like this, like, mm. because what's gonna happen? As this is trying to dig its way down, all of this precious little rooting hormone is just gonna go all over the place. So, you should have something like a dowel. What do I have? Um. Oh, mom. Can I use your cream for our friends? Oh, this is for you. <laughs> mom's going to kill me after this. No, that's okay. okay, Mom. It's okay, Mom? Yeah. yeah. So, now I'm going to make a hole. Got that? Can you guys see it? How's my mom's camera work? Mommy, can you see, actually? Yeah. Because you're seeing it. Yes. Is your finger in the way? No. Okay. So, you see the hole there, guys? Beautiful. I'm going to go with my little rooting hormone, and I'm going to press it down. And this is the same action that you take for other plants. This just happens to be a simple but very beautiful little geranium. Now, I can do this, and I can add another one here if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Not today. Um, and so what's now important is that this, oh, no, I'm going to water it. Um, oh, no, am I going to sacrifice my water? <laughs> All right, I'm trying not to make a mess. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to water this. Look how cute. Now, here's the thing. This does not have any roots, right? So how does a plant take up most of its water? From the roots. So how is this now going to be able to take up the water that it needs in order to form roots? Well... I'm going to make a little greenhouse. Now, I, I, I know that I put this on a, in a glass, but that's only because I didn't want water all over the place. I wouldn't do that. I would just set this down on a table with a saucer. So what I do is just use a plastic bag. And we all know how pervasive plastic bags are. We have them. And I would create a little greenhouse dome like this so that the water that's in here will evaporate and it'll create like a little dome, atmospheric dome. And then the water will be taken in by the plant through the leaves. Yay! It's acting like an orchid, kind of, right? So that is how it is going to uh, receive its water. Now, keep in mind, 
that in order for plants, certainly uh, geraniums, to form uh, a root, sometimes they need to be placed, maybe I'll just move this, they need to be placed somewhere where it's warm, but not, um, you don't want it to be really, really sunny. Not yet. Right now, it's basically trying to generate its own root system. And so you would put it maybe near a window, but not in direct sunlight. And somewhere where maybe it gets a little bottom heat. Some of you might have um, those plant mats, the heat mats. Those are really good. And typically, a lot of plants will form roots when the soil temperature is, uh, I don't know exactly, near 70 maybe, 60 something. So that will give you an ideal setting. And the way you know that you, if you have to continue adding water and water again, is if you see no condensation on the bag. Like say tomorrow morning I come and there's no con condensation. I may be shocked, but maybe the soil has dried out and then you have to add a little bit more. And so in a few weeks, what's gonna happen is come over here. What's gonna happen? You're gonna tug at it lightly. I can't do it now because I don't want to uproot it. And if it resists, that means it's formed roots. Congratulations! You are the new parent of a new geranium plant. You see how that works? So, and, and that is something very simple, but that again is another testimony to how wonderful things are in nature that anybody can have them. Okay, now I can't go and and have some famous, you know, the queen's gold. I can't have her beautiful jewelry, but look at this. I can have a beautiful garden full of amazing wonders that you can get up close and enjoy. And it's all by knowing a few little skills, which I'm going to teach you. But it's a commitment for a commitment. I'm putting my foot down, oh, my hand down. Commitment for a commitment. You guys subscribe. You guys follow me. Ask me your questions, and I'm going to answer. I will be there for you. Let me tell you something. When I got home, it's pretty crazy. I just finished taping a TV show, and I was like, mm, this is a lot of work. Oops. Ouch. And I remember as I was setting things up, and you saw I had a a computer malfunction. That's why my beautiful mommy's holding my iPhone and taping me. And I had, look at this beautiful, and a nice speaker I bought and everything. I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. And as I was toiling and putting everything together, I was thinking, what did I do? Why did I plan to do this on a Friday? And I got a, I have a commitment in about 45 minutes. And I remember thinking, I hope that this doesn't influence my attitude when that camera goes on, because I like to keep it real. And I don't want to come on here and pretend like, oh, I'm surely happy-go-lucky, and then have been yelling and kicking the dog five minutes earlier. Well, it didn't happen, thank God. <laughs> but it is a lot of work. So why do I say this? I say this because I want to give you an opportunity to add more joy to your life to enjoy the best things in life that are free by gardening, by cultivating a plant, by knowing how to grow an orchid or an anthurium or how to multiply your geraniums. These are things that I just feel compelled to share with you. Whatever I have, I want to share with you. But it's a lot of work. So what do I ask? Show up. I don't think that's too much to ask, and I don't want you to feel guilty, but this holds true for all YouTube creators who are very consistent in their work, and that you can see that they work really hard and they want to do a great job. I'm talking for them too. You know, when you watch our videos, do a like, you know, a thumbs up, like it, love it, leave a comment, because then when we look at the fact that you've all been watching and you've been enjoying or you have a question, you may not even agree. But if you do, do that. And that is all I ask of you, is your support. Now, I don't know if you can still see me. Can you still see me, guys? Oh, wait, hold on. My mommy gave me the camera back. Hi, Shirley. 
Oh yeah, it's still going, mom. You can see, oh, but you can't see me? All right, well, I'm gonna be wrapping this up. Here, mama. So what I was saying, guys, is it's a commitment for a commitment. I wanna do more Ask Shirley's. I mean, I'm thinking about Fridays. Can you guys post on the chat board if Friday works for you? Because it really, it, it, it does work in my schedule, I can do it. And it, in the evenings, I know we went early today. Five is a little early for me. But I'm thinking maybe 6.30 or 7 p.m. on Fridays. I want to hear your opinion. Thank you so much for joining me on my first Ask Shirley. Now, again, I'm going to look at your questions. If I didn't get to it, I'm going to get to it. You guys are going to get to know me. You know when I say that, I mean it. And... Uh, I will get to your question, even if it's just private message or if I answer it or if Lindsay helps me to answer it. But I want you to know that I'm here for you, that I love what I'm doing, and I care very much about you guys. Because I have a, a, I have a big spot in my heart for people, even if you're a stranger, okay? Unless you're mean, if you're bad, oh, I might not like you. But most people are so amazing. My mom said, see, my mom's being my mom. She's my camera person. She's like, mm. I know what she's thinking. Don't say that, that I don't like you. <laughs> okay, mom, I didn't mean that like that. But what I'm saying is that I have, I don't know, I just have a, a, a big heart for people, and I want to help. And if there's something that I have that you need, I'll give it to you. So let me help you. Let me help you become a great gardener. Let me help you tap into life, into that deep well because there's so many amazing things for us to enjoy in life. And like I said, it's free. All you have to know is have a little bit of knowledge so that you can bring these beautiful living plants to, to flower and you know take good care of them. And that's what I'm here for. Thank you so much. And if you're following me on Facebook, I'll see you there next. Or Instagram. I'm here for you, friends. Please don't be shy to ask me a question on Ask Shirley. Have a great evening and happy Mother's Day. See you later. Now I'm going to try to turn it off. Let's see.